Hi YouTube, Wes Stampley, JWS Repair Service here again today. Uh, today we're going to look at something a little bit different. I mean, we don't really do how-to and DIY and instructional videos, things like that. But today we're going to go a little bit further back. What if you don't have a four-wheeler or a side-by-side -side and you want to buy one? What do you look for? I mean, you know you can go buy a new one if, you know, you hit the lottery or you just enjoy having $500 a month payments for a four-wheeler or a toy. But if you're down to earth and you'd like to buy something in a, in a used machine and save a ton of money, uh, what do you look for to make sure you're really saving a ton of money and not buying somebody else's problem? I haven't really seen any videos like that on the internet. I haven't actually had anybody ask for one, but I'm going to take a bet that there might be a few of you out there that would benefit from this. So hold on, I'll be right back and we'll show you what to look for and what to make sure you stay away from. Hang on. Okay, we're back. Now let's just take, for instance, this machine here. This is a 2004 Yamaha 350 Bruin. Uh, it's a two-wheel drive version. And if you're wondering how you would know that, if you're not familiar with it, you, if it was four-wheel drive, you would see a drive unit right in this area here. Uh, I've got something I can show you what the drive unit is, but it's basically a rear end for the front end. So instead of say a rear end for the front end, we're going to call that a drive unit because that's technically what it is. Now, this is a Yamaha Viking. It is four wheel drive. And you'll see in the front, right there, is a drive unit and you've got drive shafts going out to both front wheels. Okay? difference between two and four-wheel drive now we come back and look at this and it's like okay well we need to know a lot of times listings for used equipment is kind of vague some people will say well I've got a Yamaha four-wheeler uh, for sale and you call them up and ask for them about it and they go you know what can you tell me about it they'll say well it's blue okay that's that's fantastic Let's get into the real nitty-gritty. A lot of times people don't know what year model they have. Uh, either they maybe didn't buy it new themselves or they've just forgotten. On this particular unit, I'll show you where the VIN number is. And most Yamahas are like this, where they'll have it on this front left-hand frame rail. And you'll see it's a 17-digit number. Now, if you go to the 10th digit in, well, I'll let you count over because if I try to put my hand in there, uh, you won't be able to see the camera. But if you count the tenth digit over, it's a four. If you're not familiar with that, that's going to tell you that's a 2004. Um, it does go to letters back and forth. It goes from letters to numbers. So if you're in doubt what year something might be, just Google a VIN digit for the year model, and it'll bring up a chart. Super easy to find. Uh, not hard at all. Uh, you can find it with an easy search, and that way you'll know what uh, what mo uh, year model you actually have. Uh, that helps determine what it's worth as well. Now, some of the things to look for. This unit is not in for is not for sale. It's just in for service. But a couple of things you want to do. You want to query the owner. You know why are they selling it? Are they getting something bigger? They're just not riding anymore. Uh, they are, they're going to buy another one. They want to go with a different brand. But we're asking, you know, how long they've had the machine. Has it been reliable? And just kind of get an idea of, you know, what is it that you don't really want to buy somebody else's problem. But at the end of the day, it's still up to you to be an educated consumer to make sure that you're not. Uh, query them. Ask them just, you know, hey, what did you use it for? They'll usually tell you, you know, I only took my grandma to church on Sundays and only in fair weather. Uh, and the thing's got a snorkel kit on it and swamper tires, but uh, you know, it's, this one is all stock. Uh, the tires have been changed. Maxxis is not the factory brand that would have been on this uh, when it came from the factory, but that's okay. They've got somewhere left on them. They're not great, but they're not terrible. You don't have to buy tires immediately. Tires are very, very important. On a four-wheeler, obviously, if you want to be able to get traction, uh, you don't want to have to put air in them constantly. You want to make sure they're holding holding air. Uh, that's annoying. Uh, but tires are also a, a pretty pretty big cost on a four-wheeler. I've seen some four-wheeler tires go for over $200 a piece. 
Now, you can generally get them a lot cheaper on Amazon, and we even send our customers, believe it or not, to Amazon, because a lot of times they can get tires cheaper there than we can get them at our dealer cost. Uh, so yeah, that's just kind of whacked out, but that is all about buying power. Now, we looked at the machine, we determined what it is, Luckily, it already has, it still has the stickers on it, so we can very well tell it's a Yamaha Bruin 350. We know it's a 2004. You'll see there's a pull rope. You always want to pull that. It's nice to have that to make sure that it's there. It also tells you, is the engine locked up? Now, the battery is up on this, so we can spin it over. But a lot of times, you'll see listings for, oh, runs ran when we parked it, uh, just needs a battery really just needs a battery well there may be a reason that they don't want you to try to turn it over I've also seen it where they've cut the ropes in these and cut the rope so that you couldn't try to pull it over a uh, guy buys it brings it up here to the shop and the engines locked so they didn't want him to turn it over because they they wanted to make sure I mean it makes just common sense if you were going to sell something to get the best price for it if all it needed was a battery Put a battery on it, make it run, get more for it. Plus it's easier to load. Now, some of the things we want to look for in the back, and this is pretty much universal to any of them. Now this is shaft drive, most are shaft drive now, so you'll see this drive unit, like I pointed out on the front of that Viking. Uh, it's basically, it's a very, well it's along the same, it does exactly the same thing as the front one. There may be a little bit of slight mounting differences on how they are because this does have part of your your uh, swing arm tube in it but take a look at the axles in here you want to make sure you don't have rust showing around these where this gap is uh if you've got wait a minute, where's my finger i'm not used to doing this okay if you see where there, there's a gap there this is a hub that fits over the shaft that there's a spline on the shaft if that's all, you see a lot of rust around there, something like that, or if you see, if you shake the machine side to side, if you see play in that, that can mean you have bad hubs and or a bad axle. That can be kind of expensive to replace as well. So you want to keep an eye on that. We're looking at our brake hardware over here. You can see everything's intact. Uh, these, this is a manual cable brake on the rear. It's not hydraulic, but it is hydraulic on the front. But this all moves. Well, it'll move if I was, wasn't trying to do it with my left hand and reach over the tire. But this, this we'll check this to make sure this all moves and functions. Uh, but you want to make sure you're not missing anything here. Uh, there's usually an adjuster wing nut, a spring, this little joint that the cable goes through, and then uh, the cable itself. We're going to make sure all that stuff's intact. And we'll just check the brake up here. And it moves just fine so it holds we've got a, a good park brake that holds so that's good let's check our hydraulic brake hydraulic brake is a little stiff this I don't like uh, you might think that means it's got great brakes if it only moves that much uh, realistically what that's telling me is that fluid is old and boy is it if you look at that reservoir hole right there you'll see that fluid is chocolate brown that should be very virtually clear so most likely what's happening here this fluid hasn't been changed it's supposed to be changed every two years and that's on anything by the way uh, it has degraded formed some crystallization inside there and it stopped up the compensator port so that the fluid is never really releasing pressure in the caliper so that's something that's going to have to be addressed or even though it moves now as you ride it and that fluid heats up starts expanding it has nowhere to go it can't come back through to the reservoir and relieve the pressure so it'll start applying the brakes and the further you go the more it gets locked down and that's going to be the front brakes and that's going to make handling really sketchy now some of the other things to check of course obviously we want to make sure we've got a good seat uh, you can recover these usually uh, they typically uh, make make covers for just about everything so they can be recovered but you want to make sure the foam's intact uh, make sure you got plenty of cat prints on here I have no idea we don't have a cat I don't know where those came from but it may have been the customer but anyway check under here under the seat 
So a few things you want to look for. First off, here's our battery. Looks like the terminals are pretty clean. Uh, they're tight. That cable's a little, little dirty. We'll clean that. You want to check the air box. Now, the air box can tell you a lot of things. Number one, it'll tell you if it's got an air filter in it, which is important. And yes, we do have an air filter, sort of, but you can see it's just falling apart. So clearly that needs an air filter. Now, something else to note, this is full of oil. Okay, well, that's not good. Uh, this does have a breather going to the crankcase, but that shouldn't be full of oil. There's a few things that can cause that. Uh, the most common issue that causes it is they roll the machine over. Uh, so guys will get out there, get to running too fast, not paying attention, run off in a ditch or something, and end up rolling the machine over, and that'll end up putting uh, oil in the air box. Now, the other thing that's pretty common issue, and I'm just going to clip these back on, I'll just make a note on the work order, that it needs an air filter. One of the other most common things is that it's just overfilled with oil, so we're going to check that. And it's definitely not overfilled with oil. That is right on the money. Now, actually, that's not true. That's actually going to be low because what we're going to do is we're going to check that the proper way. Since I know we're servicing this, I'm not that worried about it. But the normal way to check the oil is to only put it in, we'll take it out, wipe it off, and only put it in until the threads touch. Then you take it out and check it, and you can see that it's full. We'll, we'll just show you how to do it the the absolute correct way but anyway that's how you do that now it's not overfilled with oil so why is there oil in the air box well it could just be like I said they may have rolled it over uh, since it's not overfilled in a worst case scenario it could be crankcase blow by indicating a, a worn piston and rings uh, not a really good way to check for blow by except with a leak down tester we do have a leak down tester and I will check that, but I doubt you will, so I'm not going to bother going to that procedure because it's kind of complex. Uh, and it takes a while, and that's probably not what's wrong with this anyway. Now, if the machine doesn't run when you want to buy it, if the customer will not let you perform a compression test on it, don't walk, run away because they're hiding something. Uh, it, it typically, now this machine, I know it doesn't run. Uh, we know it had set up for quite a while. Uh, that's one other thing you want to do. You want to check your fuel level. See if there's any in it. This has got a little bit in it. Give it the old sniff test. Yeah, and it smells like uh, Barney the Dinosaur. So yeah, that, that gas is old and needs to be changed. So that's going to indicate we need to rebuild a carburetor. Now, what I've done here, if you can see, is I've attached a compression gauge, taking the spark plug out, and attach the compression gauge into the spark plug hole. If you have uh, these these tools uh, available, it's a good idea to get them. I'm pretty sure that's a Harbor Freight thing. You could probably pick up for little or nothing. It really save you a lot of heartbreak. So what I'm going to attempt to do, and it's so bright out here today, and I apologize for the lack of video quality, but it's about 102 degrees, and it is super bright out here. And I can't hardly see the, uh, the display. But what you want to do, remove the spark plug. I've taken the, oh, my lovely assistant is going to help me. Okay. I've taken the uh, spark plug out. I've put it back in the spark plug cap, and I've grounded the spark plug. That's very important. Uh, you can damage the ignition system if that plug is not allowed to fire. Now, what we're going to do is he's going to hold the throttle wide open. And he's going to hit the start button and we're going to watch and see if we have spark down here and then how much compression so go ahead lovely assistant okay as you can tell the spark plug was sparking at least i hope you can tell and if we look at our compression gauge though it's upside down let me turn it up you'll see we've got 155 pounds of compression that is very good uh, you need to have holding the throttle wide open a minimum of a hundred pounds of compression for the unit to be able to start and idle so that's important uh, not having spark 
is usually not a simple fix. Uh, sometimes it's just a foul spark plug. The majority of the time it is not. So if it does not have fire, here's the adapter that I uh, screwed into. Well, here's the whole gauge that I screwed into. I'm gonna put the spark plug back in right now. Because as you can tell, this, uh, this machine is outside as we are completely full this time of year. And uh, we don't have any room to keep everything inside. So the ones that can go outside will. The motorcycles and everything are all inside. So I'm just gonna finger tighten that in there. That'll be good. We'll go ahead and uh, just make sure we get that in there as far as we can. And let me find the wire and we're gonna just and I can do that where you can sit. Hopefully, maybe, I don't know. I can't see squat. But anyway, we put that back on there. So we're good. So what we determined, now we still have to take a chance on this. We know that it has the ability to start and run. It's going to need an air filter, that air box cleaned out. It's going to need a service, have all the fluids change, especially for the brake system. So we know we're going to need tires at some point, but it's not critical today. But though it can run, we don't know how well it can run. We also don't know if it'll consume oil and smoke real bad once it runs. Now, what we can do is look in the pipe and see if we see any kind of, you know, real liquidy oil or something like that in the end of the pipe. It's not always a great indicator. Uh, I don't see anything that looks abnormal there. That's just normal carbon. Uh, that I would expect. So you're still taking a bit of a chance on the fact that it won't run. Like I said, it could fire up. It could have a horrible engine noise. Uh, it could have... Uh, like I said, it could use uh, consume oil like crazy. Uh, it could put out smoke like a hundred hippies at a Harley party if you don't watch it. So you're still taking a chance on it, but I would have to say with the with the lack of damage and destruction, I'm gonna step in the shade for a minute here. The fact that this machine's in in pretty good shape, I would have to say I would feel fairly confident uh, taking a chance on that one, and it would be fine. Now, I will be back in just one second after I get set back up on the tripod. Hang on one second. So what have we learned? Well, we've learned that we have a 2004 Yamaha 350 Bruin two-wheel drive. Let's just say it's for sale. Well, what should you pay for something like that in that kind of condition? Because as far as a, a machine that is 17 years old, uh, that is a 2004, you know, 17 years old, uh, off-road machine that is in very good condition I would say it was probably well kept and why they haven't ridden it and allowed it to sit up to where it wouldn't run anymore we don't know uh, somebody goes off to college uh, somebody moves who knows hopefully when you queried the the seller as to why they were selling it they may have been able to give you a little more insight on what they're the reason that they're getting rid of the machine now in the testing that we looked at you want to make sure that the machine is complete the tires are okay. Uh, if they don't all hold air, it's not the end of the day. Uh, you should be running sealer in those tires anyway. Uh, and typically, unless it's a really big hole, most sealers, uh, we don't use slime and I don't recommend slime because it's water-based. It'll rust your steel wheels from the inside unless it has aluminum wheels on it. In that case, it corrodes it from the inside. But nevertheless, don't use slime. Get something from a power sports dealer. Oh, uh, It's called PCC or puncture control compound it's made and sold by quad boss and it is not water-based uh, it works fantastic it's got granulated rubber and corded uh, the tire cord in it so it actually puts something in the hole and it can seal up to a quarter of an inch hole so it can save you lots of tires that way anyway so I'm not gonna harp on tires forever but tires are important like I said that is a huge cost if it needed a set of tires right out of the gate plan on $500 to buy a set of tires. No, I'm not kidding. Figure, probably figure about $500 by the time you buy tires, to have them installed, that, 
sealer in them because you're like I said, you're definitely going to want to put sealer in a brand new set of tires. You're not going to want to start plugging every little hole you've got from day one. So by that, you're going to figure you're going to spend five hundred dollars just for that, just for tires. Now, let's just forget tires. Say they're like that; they've got some life left in them. Maybe you're not going to use it that heavily. Those tires may last you another year. Let's just say the running issues. Now we do have a good battery. We know that we do. We do have spark. And we do have enough compression to run. Now, we, like I said, we don't know if it's going to smoke or there's going to be any strange engine noises. We also don't know if it moves because since it doesn't run, we don't know that the drivetrain is intact. But seeing no signs of leakage, anything around the drive unit, things like that, and the overall condition of the machine, I would have to say that's very unlikely that it has a problem with the drive uh, system itself. But that's not always the case. You don't always look at one and it's just beat up and you it has a problem. You're like, yeah, yeah, well, of course it does. We've had some come in that look brand new that broke a drive shaft in half. So you never know what somebody was doing at the time. Uh, it's always buyer beware when you purchase uh, something secondhand or thirdhand, however it may be. So just try to, you know, advise, try to block the sun. I don't want to get any closer. I don't want to scare people. However, I am awfully pretty, though. But uh, the main thing is just try to check for, make sure things aren't missing. Like we found that air filter uh, is completely destroyed. That's not a really expensive item. Uh, it's a little surprising that it was in that kind of condition, but the unit's probably been sitting for a few years. Uh, and don't And take that with a grain of salt as well. A lot of people that are selling stuff, they'll tell you, oh, it's been sitting about six months and it ran when we parked it. Well, it's not going to run now. And your six months could have probably been two years ago because people's memories are not that great. And I will plead guilty to that as well. I thought I'd changed the oil in my personal car about six months ago. Uh, luckily, I date my oil filters. Realized it was a year ago. Uh, whoopsie. So... I need to get that done. Now, uh, the air filter, the carb work, it's going to have to, carb's going to have to be kitted. Uh, the reason it has to be kitted is I've explained these in my carburetor videos. Uh, with ethanol in the fuel, it eats everything that's rubber. So you have to kit them to put the new ethanol resistant stuff in it. And then every time you have to replace it anyway, because even the ethanol resistant stuff gets hard and cracks. But uh, kits uh, for that labor for that it needs to have a complete service have all the fluids changed that includes the drive unit oils engine oil and filter the hydraulic fluid for the front brakes needs to be changed now that unit is air cooled so there's no coolant in the radiator there is no radiator so you don't have to worry about that but there are so you're probably figuring about 280 labor at our shop rate Plus the parts for the service, so probably figure you're going to spend about $350, $375 on the service. The making it run with the carb kit and that, you're looking at about $325 or so with parts and labor. So that's however much that is. You can tell me in the comments how much that was. And then if it needs tires right now or if it needs a battery, you probably figure on spending anywhere between batteries have gone up just like everything else. You probably figure on spending $75 to $100 for a battery if the battery's no good. So you could drop a thousand bucks in it before you could even ride it. You could also drop a thousand bucks in it and find out it smokes like crazy or it doesn't move. That's why it's very, very important. I highly recommend to people don't purchase power sports equipment that doesn't run. And never buy anything that's an off-brand, uh, a Tao Tao, a Hu Feng Pu, a uh, uh, Sun L. Uh, they have a, a million different names of them, but they're all Chinese knockoffs. Uh, they're not good. Uh, they're not that much cheaper than a name brand unit like your Kawasaki, Suzuki, Honda, uh, Kawasaki, Polaris, Can-Am. Even though I don't really like Can-Am, they still it's a lot better than a Chinese. Uh, major brands, uh, they're, they're going to be far superior to the Chinese knockoff stuff. Uh, I, I can't stress that enough. Just try to stay away from that unless you absolutely don't have a choice and you like going back and forth to the shop a lot and spending a lot of money to keep your cheap machine running because they have a high, high cost of ownership. 
Uh, if there's any other questions you have about this, I think I'm about ready to wrap because I'm sweating to death and I'm going to go get some water and sit in the office where the air conditioner's on. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave those below in the comments. I try to answer all of the comments that are left on my videos. Uh, if you like what you saw today, if you found it helpful, if you'd be so kind as to like this video and share this video with anybody that you think they would find it useful. And you could also go one step further and hit that subscribe button. Uh, that is free to you, but means a lot to us in the shop. Uh, that subscription means that eventually we might get paid to do this and we'll be able to put out much more content, more in-depth content and better quality content. However, I think it's not too shabby, but better content if we're just doing this out of the kindness of our hearts, which is fine, but it would also be nice to offset the cost sometimes. Uh, so you could subscribe. You could also tap that notification bell and you'll be the first to know when we post new content. You can always catch us on our, our website on the web at www.jwsrepairservices.com. And as always, have a great ride, stay safe, and thanks for watching. Take care.